Hiya and welcome to the second episode here of the Reading Roundup. My name is James and today we're going to go ahead and go through all of the news and latest rumours surrounding Reading Football Club throughout the last week. So today the topics are going to include the Colchester game where we won 2-0 in a pre-season friendly. We're going to go ahead and talk about some of the contract extensions that Reading have recently handed out. I'm going to talk about who we've taken on trial, some transfer rumours, some confirmed transfers, and finally, we'll then talk about the Benfica game. So we're going to start off the video by talking about the Colchester game. So Reading were able to run out 2-0 win uh, against Colchester. Um, yeah, it may only be pre-season, but it's nice for Reading to have finally won a game. Um, it's been a while since I've been able to say that and it's been a while since Reading kept a clean sheet as well. It doesn't matter if we played three goalkeepers, it doesn't matter if they only played half an hour each, Reading was still able to have a clean sheet. Uh, so a lot of the game when we spoke about it in the video uh, hadn't actually came out about it. We just knew about what the admin on Twitter had said so far. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and speak about the players that definitely played because that's definitely a list that I have confirmed now. Um, so definitely confirmed to play for a Reading was Joe Lumley, Luke Southwood, Dean Bazunis. The right back was Aberfa. We had McIntyre, Holmes, Dorset, Holtzman, uh, Tetek, Levy, Ijaria, Ince, Aziz, Scott, Mete, Joao and Ebiteromon. And I've completely butchered that. If someone can tell me how to pronounce his name in the comments, that would very much be appreciated. Um, it's also been confirmed that two trialists were spotted. So that's Connor Wickham and Ormond Otwill. So that's 19 players that have been confirmed that were involved in that fixture. Now 23 players played in the game. So that leaves four spots up for grabs. Now in terms of who played, probably going to be a couple of academy players. But I also think there was two players that we also took on trial uh, straight after the video on Friday that may be Played. So that includes Massimo Luongo and Sam Hutchinson, both previously of Sheffield Wednesday. Not really sure who the other two players could have been. It potentially could have been some more trialists or it potentially could have been some academy lads. But I don't see why the academy lads wouldn't have been named in the squads if they were the ones that played. Paul Lintz has been very, very, very quiet on who we have in terms of of trialists and it's something that Reading fans have had to dig out. We've had to do some detective work on Twitter to find out who was the players that played in the game and that who were the players that actually went to St George's Park as well. So it's going to be interesting again to see what is going on. In terms of the game though, Reading were able to win 2-0. Goals were, came from a corner where we scored an own goal. And Lucas Schwal was fouled in the box and Yaku Mete was able to tuck a penalty away to make it 2-0. That was it. Not much else happened. Bit of a dull game. At least that's what that admin was saying. It was basically just Reading running riot, except they only scored two goals. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens throughout pre-season that continues, especially with games against Wimbledon, West Ham and Brighton coming up very soon. So we're going to go ahead and move into the next part. We're going to go ahead and talk about some contract extensions. So one of the names that I mentioned in the team sheet that Reading played against Colchester was Femi Aziz. Now it's been announced that Femi Aziz has signed a two-year deal at Reading. He actually signed it on the morning of the Colchester fixture. And he actually ended up playing in that game as well. If Femi Aziz scored in that game, were we going to announce his contract with like him scoring? Like I don't know what the deal was. Were we going to announce it that way? Not 100% sure, but it would have been a good way to announce it. In the end, we ended up just saying, yeah, look, he signed a new deal after the Colchester fixture. I'm happy that Femi Aziz has signed a new deal. He's a good player. I spoke about it in the last Reading Roundup. He's a player that I think we should have tried to keep he's a young player he's talented and i'll be very interested to see how his future goes he's going to add depth to our wings which is something that we really do have now i think reading's problem this season is going to be the defense and completely not the attack i think attacking wise we've got so many options but defensively we're struggling Attacking wise, you've got Lucas Schwal, you've got Yaku Mehta, you've got Tom Ince, you've got Ovi Ajaria. That front four 
is a good front four for the championship. And that's not just me saying that as a biased Reading fan, that is genuinely a good front four. Now you look at the depth that Reading have in terms of players that are the backups. At the moment, striker-wise, we've got George Puskas and we've got Jamari Clark. Wingers-wise, we've got Junior Hoylet. We've got Ovia Jaria that can play on the wing. We've got Femi Aziz and we've got Rashawn Scott. Number 10 position, maybe we don't have too many options. We've got Kamara and then we've got obviously Ovia Jaria that can play there. That moves us on to the next position of next contract extension, uh, and that is Junior Hoylet has signed a new deal with Reading as well. I'm quite happy that we've managed to tie Hoylet down to another year. I think he's a good player. I think I'm happy to see him stay. Hoylet did well at Reading last year. He didn't do great in terms of his numbers and his output and stuff like that, but his effort that he puts onto the pitch, you'll always see Junior Hoylet put 100% on the pitch, and I'm happy to see him staying at the club. I think he's a good player and I'm happy to see him stay. We also just spoke about in depth of who we've got in our attacking options and Jamari Clark is one of them options as the 18-year-old signed a new deal with Reddin after his international expedition with Jamaica. Happy to see Clark stay, hoping he can bring a bit more of what he did last year, especially at Birmingham at Way. I mean, that was the only thing he did last year because he got injured straight after and was never able to break back into the first team. He's going to be reporting to Noel Hunt's under-23 side, so hopefully we can see him break through that barrier and push on and get a first-team call-up soon. So we're going to move on to the next part of the video, and that's actually going to be the players that Reading have currently got on trial. So in terms of names that we've got on trial, the first name is a player that, in my opinion, shouldn't even have to have a trial with Reading at the moment, and that's going to be Massimo Luongo. Literally, as soon as I uploaded the last video, it was announced that he was on trial at Reading. And I was like, are you joking me? As soon as I upload, there's a bit more news. Um, I'm not sure why we've got him on trial, to be honest. Um, I would have given him a contract straight away. He's a good, solid player who can do a job in the midfield. Yeah, he can pick up a knock here and there. And that's potentially why Reading have maybe brung him in on, on a trial instead of just giving him a straight deal. Maybe they just want to see how his levels are in terms of his fitness and in terms of where he's at as a player. Um, but he was a big reason as to why Sheffield Wednesday's form changed last season. Uh, he was a big reason towards their playoff push. So I would definitely give Luongo a contract. I think he's a good enough player. He could definitely still play at championship level. So I'll be interested to see what happens with him. The next player that we're going to have a look at is Connor Wickham. Um, Listen, a few years ago, Reading were interested in him. And a few years ago, I would have taken him. But now, he's not someone that I personally would like to see Reading take a punt on. He's struggled with injuries once again, like he has throughout his whole career. Last three seasons, he's played 27 games and only scored three goals. And last year in League One, he only managed to score one goal for MK Dons. Listen, he struggled with injuries throughout his career. And for me, it's a no-go. I think there's better options out there in terms of depth. Puskas is still with the club. Shane Long, someone that we're very much rumoured to be signing. I don't want to see Connor Wickham sign, to be honest, at this point. He struggled in League One. Why is he going to be better in the Championship? Jamari Clark would probably be a better player in terms of usage. Yeah, he's an under-23s player, but why to not take a punt on him instead of someone like Connor Wickham? Yeah, Connor Wickham's got the experience, but he's also got a horrific injury record. And that's something Reading really struggle with is injuries. So don't want to see Connor Wickham come in. No offence to the lad, but just personally wouldn't like to see him. Next player that has been confirmed that Reading have got on trial at the moment is Sam Hutchinson. Uh, he spent the majority of his career and the majority of the last eight years at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, he spent a season in like Greece and then just returned back to Wednesday again. Um, he's a good midfielder a few years ago, um, but he's moved more into a centre-back role now. Uh, as he's gotten older. He said by Sheffield Wednesday fans to have been a bit leggy whilst in League One, but being at the back has given him a new lease of life. Now, this is just a few reviews that I found from Twitter uh, that Sheffield Wednesday fans have said on the release of Sam Hutchinson. Um, so just kind of what they thought. Uh, Hutchinson has been class at the back. What is the thought process on that one? Who will now be the central defender of the three? Don't quite get that. Sammy has been great since his return. And then they started talking about Berahino. Both, I believe, could do a job as we're still in League One. And the manager needs to be moved on, not Hutchinson. He's got at least another year in him. 
listen, if Sam Hutchinson can perform at a League One level, I don't see why he can't be back up for Reading. I don't think he should be a starter for Reading, but I think he can be decent backup. We need centre-backs, we need backups, and Sam Hutchinson can provide that. He's a Chelsea youth player. He was a very good player for Sheffield Wednesday. One of the reasons why they were up there in the playoffs for so long. I think Sam Hutchinson's a good player, and I think I'd like to see us try and bring him in. Just for a backup, though. Not for a starter, because we've already got the starters in terms of McIntyre and Holmes and Scott Dan, probably. But Sam Hutchinson can be a decent backup. Moving on to the left back position is the last player that was been confirmed really that we have on trial, and that's Brandon Ormond Otwill. He spent the last six seasons in Holland, uh, and he played for Swindon before that. He played 12 games in Excelsior's promotion winning season last year. It's going to be difficult to say I'd take him because I don't know if I would. I know absolutely nothing about the player and there's barely anything out there on the guy. I don't know if I'll take him. I'll leave it at that. There's not really too much I know about Brandon Ormond Otwill. But there is a left back that I definitely would take. And that's going to move us on now to our transfer rumours. And that's going to move us on to Nicky Cadden. So this is the first player that Reading have been linked with for a while. He was another one that came out on Friday uh, with who we've been linked with. And he's actually Forrest Green's left back slash winger from last season. The guy managed to get six goals and 12 assists. And in my opinion would be a very decent pickup on a free transfer. Especially as I think we definitely need a left back right now as we don't have one at the club. Who scored has got his strengths as crossing set pieces and holding onto the ball. And his weaknesses are his defensive contribution and his tackling. Now obviously defensive contribution and tackling being weak is not what we want to see. But crossing and set pieces and holding up the ball. Who does that remind you of? That reminds me of Nicky Shorey. Reading haven't really had a left back that's been classed like that. Like Ian Hart really was the last one. In terms of someone that's going to put balls in the box, Omar Richards was absolutely class. That's not what I'm going on. But in terms of a set-piece player that's going to like whip a great ball in, Nicky Cadden could be the man for Reading. Very interested to see how this one pans out. I would take him. He's got experience in English football. Yeah, he was playing for Forest Green last year in League 2. But he won promotion. And 12 assists and 6 goals is a decent contribution. Listen, the Reading way has always been to pick up players from lower leagues. And this is one of them players we're going to pick up from a lower league. I'd take Nicky Cadden on a free right now. The next player is another left back who we have been looking at. And that's Bolly Bolignoli. Uh, he's a left back who played for Celtic most recently. Uh, he's only played two games in the last few seasons. Uh, I spoke to a Celtic fan who I'm friends with. And he said that he has attitude problems. And he isn't really a good footballer. Um, Obviously, the Scottish division is probably about the same level as the Championship division, so I don't know how it'd fit in in terms of Reading's team. But he is someone who's been described with attitude problems. He was a reason why Celtic got in trouble during lockdown um, because he decided to go on holiday to Spain. Just why not? The guy just did it. Uh, who scored has his strengths as passing and his aerial duels, whereas his weaknesses are his crossing. And he's also been described as someone that likes to tackle. Don't know much about the lad just seems like trouble to be honest so I'll just stay away from him next up we've got Nabi Saar and he's a player who played centre back for Huddersfield last season he started 17 games and has been described as a player who is very good with his feet but he can lack concentration now locking, lacking concentration is obviously something you don't want from a centre back um, look I think he's a decent player whenever I've seen him play he's always looked alright lacking concentration that's not what you want to see and I think Nabi Saar was decent for Huddersfield. Can't say I've watched a million games of him. Can't say I've seen him millions of times. But whenever I saw him play, he was always all right. I'd take a punt on him. He's a free transfer right now. We need centre-back cover. At the minute, we've got, what, three players that can play at centre-back that are first-team level. So I'd definitely take a punt on Nabi Saar to bring him in. At least then we can get it up to four, so we've got a bit of backup. Finally, the last player that we've been linked with is Jeff Hendrick. Now, he's a decent midfielder, in my opinion, Jeff Hendrick. A player that's played over 150 games in the Premier League. Um, so currently at Newcastle. He was on loan last year at QPR. QPR fans didn't really like him, and they kind of said that he was one of the reasons that their form was in downturn last year. Personally, I'd have him 100%, though. 
We've got two options in the centre of midfield right now. Dejan Tetek and a player that we've just signed on loan today, who I'll get into after this. He's always been a good player as Jeff Hendrick. He was one of the reasons that Burnley were able to get European football. I think he was a big contribution towards that. So, yeah, I'd definitely take Jeff Hendrick. I think he's a player that I'd definitely take on loan. I think he's a player that's good enough to play at championship level. And I think for Reading, he'd be a decent enough player. It's like how we took a punt on Danny Drinkwater last year. First half of the season, he was awful. Second half of the season, he was good. Now, the difference between Danny Drinkwater and Jeff Hendrick is Jeff Hendrick has played consistent football throughout that time. Danny Drinkwater didn't. I would take Danny Drinkwater back now, especially with his interview that he's come out with the last few days, uh, where he spoke about how Paul Lintz had a big influence on him when he came back, uh, when he came to Reading. He spoke about how he wasn't sharp, he wasn't match fit when he came to Reading originally, and his performances said that as well. And he's admitted that himself. So, yeah, I'd take Danny Drinkwater back, but most importantly, talking about Jeff Hendrick, I'd definitely take him. So, moving on now to the next um, kind of little segment, but it's just a transfer confirmation. Uh, it's been confirmed that Reading have gone ahead and signed Tyler Fauna. He's a player on loan from Nottingham Forest, who recently promoted to the Premier League. Last year, spent his season at Shrewsbury. Now, he's a player that has got decent reviews, to be honest. Um, all the Shrewsbury fans were rated him. They said he was a good player. Seems like a powerful player who likes to sit deep in the midfield and he can dictate the tempo of a game and dictate kind of how a game will go. So personally, looking forward to see what we can see from Tyler Fauna, especially as he's officially signed now and it's not someone that we're rumoured and talking about and I'm like, hmm, yeah, they could be good. But yeah, no, I'm looking forward to seeing how he performs. So hopefully we can see him play against Benfica. Um, yeah, looking forward to see how he does. So we're going to move into the final segment now. We're going to go ahead and preview the Benfica friendly coming up tomorrow not really much too much i can say about this one to be honest um benfica are a champions league level team reading are a championship level team well barely that it's only pre-season um but i wouldn't expect reading to beat benfica if we do i still think that's a huge accomplishment even if it is pre-season especially for a young team like reading where they've taken a lot of knocks recently we won't win though we won't win uh, I'll be really happy to get a draw here. I'm looking forward to see how much information comes out about this game as well, uh, as it was very limited against Colchester. Uh, Paul Lintz banned the journalists and any media members from the last game. I know this game's going to be broadcast though on Royals TV, uh, or Reading TV, whatever it is that we have. Um, it's going to be broadcast on there. So at least we're going to actually get to see some of this game. So that'll be a positive. Um, be interested to see whether we go with two teams again or just the one like to see us go with just the one and then bring subs on here and there uh, just because I'd like to see our first team really get a bit of a run out in this game now Paul Lintz has come out and said that we've got seven or eight trialists currently at the club and obviously we've gone through some of them here today so it'd be interesting to see some of the other players that we've currently got on trial I'm thinking maybe the likes of Danny Drinkwater are here I'm thinking maybe the likes of oh, I don't know Nicky Cadden are here just so we can get a look at and see how these players are performing. Don't think Drinkwater really needs a trial because I think we've probably seen what we need from him last season. But it'd be interesting to see who the other players are that we currently have at the club. So that's going to do it today for the second episode here of the Reading Roundup. Um, there's not really too much else I can say in terms of the Reading week. It's been an interesting week again. It's been very much filled full of transfer rumours, full of free agents, full of trialists. And it's just going to be a consistent throughout the summer that I think we will see in terms of that. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you have all enjoyed it. We'll go ahead and see you for the Benfica review coming up tomorrow. And then finally, the Reading Roundup Episode 3 next Friday. Thanks for watching, guys. I've been James. We'll see you next time. See ya.